Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video. Uh, you know, I thought I would do a little bit of an update on the uh, GM battery, uh, Chevrolet Bolt EV battery fire uh, debacle, if you will. I'm here charging up at a EVgo. I don't really have a lot of time to edit these videos, but I wanted to get my thoughts out there just in terms of uh, what's going on. As those of you who follow my channel know, I did a uh, sort of shakedown uh, post battery update um, but you know since then and since these updates have been rolled out we have had uh, at least two uh, Chevrolet Bolt EV fires uh, that GM has had to respond to um, and uh, you know now we're under an advisory again don't park uh, inside a garage uh, basically don't leave your car charging unattended uh, a lot of things that are sort of inconvenient right but on top of that uh, it, it's kind of bringing into question whether GM's solution uh, was effective. And, you know, the first thing I want to say is I actually want to to give GM props, right? I want to um, share my uh, appreciation for the efforts that they put into this so far. Because, frankly, I think their solution or attempted solution is still the most pragmatic that I've seen. Uh, it's much better than Hyundai and LG at each other's throats, right? Suing each other for battery replacements, blaming each other. Oh, it's a folded anode. Oh, it's a, a you know faulty separator. You know, oh, it's your BMS programming. No one cares. The fact is that these cars are catching on fire, and it's the LG cells that are responsible in one way or another, right? So what I respect is GM isn't playing the blame game. Uh, what they're doing is essentially, you know, looking to fix the problem, not the blame. They put a lot of effort into this software, uh, like I said, which I appreciate, and it's something that's going to prevent fires, mitigate fires. They're not getting enough credit uh, for the batteries that they're replacing, uh, the at-risk batteries that they're replacing. But at this point, it does look like it's not enough, right? And it looks like GM is likely going to have to revisit this uh, and, and maybe with more than just software. So I wanted to talk about that uh, for a little bit because frankly, yeah, they did the software, but it's not good enough. And even if it weren't for these fires, it's not good enough. And I'll, you know, explain exactly what I mean by that, uh, after. So now first thing is, of course, uh, you know, since this, uh, software patch has been issued there have been fires this this is the big concerning thing and I think people expected this patch to be a hundred percent effective the diagnostic to be a hundred percent effective and it, it clearly is not now whether the breakdown is in the software and the diagnostic itself or whether the dealerships are not implementing it properly, that's another question. We're not sure yet. We just know that there have been two Bolt EV fires uh, since they received uh, the software patch. Now, one of the things that we do know also is that the number of Bolt EVs that have caught fire uh, is much, much higher within a certain population. Basically, Bolt EVs, where their battery packs in the cars were manufactured in basically Q3 of 2018, maybe, you know, the second half of 2018. Uh, so those model year 2019 Bolt EVs made in the second half of 2018 are very problematic. They're catching fire at a much higher rate, and it appears that the two that have caught fire post-patch were cars built during that period. So that's a big problem and it's a huge indicator that whatever's happening, the software alone isn't going to be sufficient. And I think at a bare minimum, GM needs to go through and basically replace just all of the packs or buy back all of the 2019 model year Bolt EVs that were manufactured in the second half of 2018. That's sort of a minimum, right? Now, will that solve the problem? I don't know, but it does appear that GM, I think, is the first company to really acknowledge something that I haven't seen anyone else acknowledge. And, you know, the fact of the matter is we are going to have uh, EV fires, right? It's going to happen. There's going to be some percentage. So they applied the software patch to all 
uh, of their electric vehicles moving forward. It's not just to mitigate fires because of these specific LG cells that are bad, uh, but it, is, it appears to be GM just anticipating that, hey, just like internal combustion engine vehicles, we're going to have some percentage of fires uh, in EVs you know, from this point moving forward, uh, it's just that the fires right now in the Bolt EV and the Hyundai Kona Electric are the result of defective cells. And that has to be addressed on its own without software. And now one of the other things that I mentioned is that even if, uh, you know, this software worked, uh, GM wasn't done with their, their work. So they already need to update it anyway because it's clearly not enough to prevent fires and like I said they very are likely going to you know they're very likely going to need to pursue a hardware solution um, I mean I, I respect the, the route that they took uh, because look at Hyundai right now they want to replace all the batteries that's laudable uh, but where are the batteries coming from those of us who followed the Bolt EV from the beginning you know knew that the biggest constraint is battery production. GM knows this as well. This is why it wasn't some prescience or you know some genius on the spectrum when uh, Elon Musk predicted that GM would only produce and sell about 25,000 Bolt EVs a year. That's just literally how many batteries were available. There's a reason GM is right now planning or building uh, four gigafactories worth of batteries in the United States alone, right? Battery production facilities in the United States. So they get it. They know. Apparently Hyundai doesn't realize this, which is why, you know, they're, you know, they still have Hyundai Kona electric owners right now who are waiting uh, to have batteries replaced, driving around uh, at 80% with, uh, you know, limited use of their Hyundai Kona electric. So yeah, GM knows this. Uh, and so they're not going to make their owners wait for these batteries. So uh, I, I think I think their software approach was pragmatic and a good idea to begin with, uh, but it can't be the final stage. And I'll say this too, it can't be the final software because here's another perfect example of it. Right now, uh, the car died again. Ever since I've had this patch and update done, if I try to have my car up and on and running while I'm DC fast charging, you know, the, the charger kills the session. That didn't happen before. So, you know, th this, is, this is problematic software. And the truth of the matter is, even if it weren't just shutting off like this randomly when I have the car on, uh, power conditioning uh, while charging, it doesn't seem to matter anyway. The software still needed to be updated and still needed to be fixed because while it was nice that they added a charging taper right to the uh, charging profile that would normally add uh, and improve on the effective charging rate of the uh, Bolt EV. I saw that in the 2020 Bolt EV that I reviewed. It, it was you know phenomenally fast compared to uh, the the previous 2019 and previous model Chevrolet Bolt EVs when you're DC fast charging on a trip because it just keeps charging at like 90 percent. It was like 20 kilowatts almost of charging power. So it was a huge improvement. But what the 2020 did is they built off of the 2017 to 2019 and you could draw surplus power from the charger to run battery conditioning, to run cabin conditioning. So even though you had that max 50 to 55 kilowatt draw from the charger, you could always draw additional power up to that max at any point in time during the charging curve. Now they haven't done that. Now they've restricted it so you can only draw whatever the maximum the battery can take. And because you're going to run battery conditioning, because you're going to run air conditioning or heating, that's going to reduce the effective charging rate of your car. So this patch that GM released, it can't stand as it is because it's actually reduced the functionality of these vehicles from their original capability is which is something that you're not supposed to do with a recall right this is a safety recall due to a defective component you can't reduce the capability of the car to compensate for that defective component so GM still had updates and work to do on this software patch 
anyway, I'd love to hear what you think. What have your experiences been with the patch so far? Um, do you think it's about time for GM just to start looking to do full buybacks and full battery pack replacements? Um, what do you think about the idea of if GM is going to uh, do full battery pack replacements rather than waiting like Hyundai is start looking to you know increase their available battery capacity by maybe customizing an Ultium battery case that can be you know put into the Chevrolet Bolt EV. We already know that Ultium from the outset they have an eight module 66 kilowatt hour usable uh, pack configuration that can charge at 125 kilowatts. Um, maybe they can offer that as a $5,000 or $10,000 upgrade to the Bolt EV or Bolt EUV and that will free up some of the you know NCM uh, 712 battery uh, you know 64 65 kilowatt hour battery packs that were coming in the 2020 and on Bolt EVs that'll free up that capacity they can be used in the older model Bolt EVs to replace basically these problematic packs that you know, whoever's fault it is, it doesn't matter. We just need to basically put these fires to an end. Um, I'd love to hear what you think. What are your experiences? What do you think GM needs to do? Um, you know, I'd like to hear from GM. I'd like to, them to be a little bit more transparent about what's going on, how many batteries have been replaced, uh, what their plans are moving forward, and you know, how are they gonna fix this? Um, like I said, I don't care about blame. I just want to get the fires fixed. I want people, you know, to be safe and, uh, and I want them to feel secure owning an electric vehicle. So I'd love to hear what you think. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like, and subscribe. It really helps out the channel and, uh, I'll try to get back to it. You know, just a, a lot of stuff going on. So thank you for watching.